Thanks, Scott, and thanks to all of you for uh, being here. Um, I'm going to try to keep this brief so we can get out roughly on time. Um, but yeah, the hackathon was a really exciting event this weekend, and I just want to give you a brief uh, overview of what it entailed and what resulted. Uh, first of all, I want to thank my partners in crime, uh, Janice Gabrilov, uh, Pete Bacaris, and a tremendous effort from uh, Louise Lammers as well uh, in recruiting uh, participants and communicating with uh, our partner institutions as well as getting some uh, magnificent judges involved. Also, Rama Iyengar and her team at the Dean's Office, Jackie, Najib, and uh, assistance from Crispin and Layla was tremendous. Uh, Anthony Costa from the Sinai Design uh, the Prototyping Center. Uh, student involvement from Caroline, Karen, and Joe Borello. Um, a number of faculty provided uh, steady assistance. Ross, Marilyn, and Basil, uh, thank you. Um, Jason and Ashish from the Sinai App Lab, and of course, uh, Dean Friedman uh, for supporting and advocating for this event. Um, it occurred over the, started Friday, occurred over the weekend. It was a 48-hour intensive uh, event uh, as a satellite to Sinai Innovations, uh, hosted by the Graduate School and the, and the Medical School, and I just want to also acknowledge the premier sponsors, Persistent, uh, and conduits here at Mount Sinai, uh, as well as uh, support from um, the, like I said, the Sinai App Lab, Sinai by Design, Mount Sinai Innovation Partners, uh, Institute for Next Generation Healthcare, the Tisch Cancer Institute, and we had uh, um, advisors from IBM and the biostatistics team here as well, so thanks to everyone that made that possible. <clears throat> the mission of this event was to bring together students, uh, trainees, faculty, and other stakeholders from New York City and uh, fun and high energy setting to explore solutions uh, for management, monitoring, treatment, and of uh, urgent healthcare problems and uh, linked with Sinai Innovations. This year's theme was cancer. I uh, can't think of a more urgent problem as you've uh, heard this morning. Um, and secondarily to help cultivate an ecosystem at Mount Sinai, fostering the spirit of multidisciplinary uh, and team-based health tech innovation. And what we asked the teams to do over the course of this weekend was to come up with, uh, starting with a concept that they initiated that weekend to come up with what we call a minimum viable product as some sort of a demonstration uh, that their idea was uh, feasible and commercially uh, uh, viable um, for their proposed solutions. Just walking you through what this event looked like, um, on Friday we obviously started with the registration. We had close to 90 uh, participants, uh, about half of whom were from here at Mount Sinai and half from at uh, partner institutions and uh, including Rensselaer Polytech, um, City College, um, Stevens Institute of Technology, uh, Cooper Union, and even uh, we had a group that uh, flew cross country from Harvey Mudd out in California to participate in this event, um, as well as folks from uh, uh, industry who are sort of serial hackathoners who uh, enjoy, you know, participate in, in these things. Um, after providing a couple of lectures, brief lectures, to kind of set the stage for the problems uh, that are addressing the cancer community. Um, the individuals came up and, and in one minute sort of pitched uh, a problem that they were interested in, uh, as well as uh, then a, a potential solution for that problem. Uh, the individuals went back and started to co uh, congregate around the problems that excited them most, forming teams. Um, and uh, then the main day, then by 11 o'clock on Friday, they had to come up with a team and an idea. And then they spent all day Saturday um, designing, coding, prototyping, making their uh, different designs. And you can see some examples here. Um, it was really a very intensive effort. Uh, many of them stayed overnight uh, Saturday uh, evening and then had to finalize their work on Sunday morning in preparation for some final pitch presentations to a panel of judges uh, and culminating in a, in a final award. Um, we ended up awarding three um, $2,500 uh, prizes, uh, as well as uh, we'll, be, we'll be selecting from, uh, there, were, there were 14 teams altogether, uh, and uh, we awarded three uh, top prizes, and we'll also be selecting one more of those teams for a wild card slot. Um, in an upcoming event called a uh, um, Shark Tank uh, that's going to be in February, uh, that's being uh, organized by Cynthia Clito uh, and Eric Liam and the Mount Sinai Innovation Partners. Um, 
really we feel like this is a cultivating this uh, interdisciplinary culture of team science and innovation, uh, and we want to continue that uh, that effort beyond this weekend and and, and encourage uh, these teams to keep working on their projects. Um, there are a couple of individuals here uh, from the event. I think they can speak about their experience better than I can. Uh, Adam Hockman and Voke Chuba, I think, are in the audience. If you could come up. I don't know if there's anyone else who would like to say a few words. And in the meantime, uh, Janice is going to briefly um, describe a couple of the projects uh, illustrating the, the wide range of innovations that were, um, that were worked on over the weekend. Thank you, Kevin. So um, just to give you some uh, de pictorial depictions, um, we had teams that worked on both diagnostics and symptom tracking. On the left-hand side, we have two groups who worked on an early detection uh, home kit, very analogous to a pregnancy test uh, for early detection of liver cancer. And our uh, bottom group on the left, uh, again, a combination of both um, uh, 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 both uh, engineers as well as uh, graduate students and uh, flex med students working on a saliva-based uh, detection for uh, triggering uh, assessment for um, individuals at risk for breast cancer. On the upper, on the right-hand side, we had group, a uh, group from, on the upper-hand panel, a group from Cooper Union joined by uh, students in our clinical research education program uh, really developing a symptom tracker that was uh, utilized IBM Watson and a bot uh, to develop uh, feedback on symptom um, symptomatology in real time, which has recently been uh, demonstrated in a publication perspective in New England Journal of Medicine at ASCO to really impact uh, overall survival, so developing these types of tools. Uh, may have great implications. And on the bottom right uh, is a member of the team from uh, the Harvey Mudd group uh, that developed a Teddy tracker that both comforted as well as reported on a variety of important distress signals in children with cancer. This just also shows you the other spectrum of projects that ranged uh, concerning education and enhancing communication. Uh, the top group was composed of students from the graduate school, the medical school, uh, the nursing community to develop a user-friendly uh, web-based and app-based platform to educate the community and stakeholders in a simplified manner uh, about um, very complex concepts in, in science and medicine that stakeholders and consumers need to better understand. Another group down below on the left hand, again, was a intermixing of both uh, individuals outside the institution and within the institution, uh, both web designers and students uh, in clinical research, working on a web-based platform to foster communication between care providers uh, and patients, leveled at both the community, the individual uh, patient and their family, as well as opportunities for um, care providers to have conversations with each other is informed by the literature. On the right-hand panel were a group of, uh, on the upper-hand panel, students ag again from uh, Cooper Union and here working on education platform in nutrition uh, that was again integrating uh, Watson-based principles to allow people to evaluate in real time uh, nutrition that they had at home through a pictorial diagram that they could take a photo of what they're eating. This would then immediately provide them input or feedback as to the nutritional content of that, which in turn could be provided to the care provider to help guide their nutritional, and comp nutritional intake and complement their uh, active ongoing therapy. And lastly, a group down below uh, that actively worked uh, on a bot to uh, seamlessly provide second opinions uh, and bring together in a user-friendly environment, streamlining that process and providing transportation as well. And uh, here are the <laughs> winners, the $2,500 winners. Um, yeah, I guess uh, I'd just like to call a few of the uh, participants up and uh, informally say a few words and to wrap things up. So. Hello. Yeah. Hello, everyone. My name is Voke Chuba. Um, I'm a graduate student in the Department of Clinical Research here in Mount Sinai with a background in medicine from Nigeria. 
Um, I'll say health hackathon was like a 48 hour, wonderful 48 hours that every participant who attest to. It was really mind blowing. There were so many ideas flying all around in 48 hours. And um, basically, it was an experience I really didn't understand what I was going into, but Dr. Gabriela really um, um, encouraged me to participate. And um, initially, I had a problem in cancer, but I didn't have a solution. And I think it went, that was what was for most people. Most people had problems they didn't have solutions to. So some people didn't have really have a problem, but when they found, like when they heard the problem, they felt they had a solution to that problem, and so teams were made, and then um, work went into progress from Friday for the 48 hours. I had only eight hours of sleep, but it was fun, because we wanted to make something very wonderful. At first, it wasn't like a competition. I just wanted to give what I had, and it was the same thing for my team members, but I think it dawned on me that it was a competition on Sunday. And then, <laughs> that was when I was hoping to win, and finally we won, team on track. <laughs> um, I had a wonderful team. So it was, because when I was going into this um, competition, I knew I had little knowledge on technology, and technology um, but then that was the whole fun part of the, um, of the team work. We had people from RPI with um, computer science knowledge, and then we had biochemical um, engineering, uh, biochemical PhD students, and clinical research students. So we had like a diverse team with different ideas. So that was what really made this uh, project successful. So during the technology aspect, I was all dormant, but um, putting in my input. It was wonderful to have Sinai App Lab guys. They really helped us a lot. Dr. Gabriela was there, everyone was there to make it really wonderful. And then it was wonderful to have people from diverse cultures. So it was not only just this work, we talked about culture. I had Indians, I had Chinese on my team, and then from Africa, so it was really wonderful. And um, that's it. So um, I really want to thank Mount Sinai for this opportunity. It was a wonderful opportunity, and I hope that they'll continue this so great ideas will come out. And I was really impressed by how much idea I saw on Sunday. I was really amazed by how much people could bring up, bring up in 48 hours. Thank you very much. Adam, you can just say a few words also. Uh, we were both on the same team and we were on track and we developed an educational platform for pediatric pan cancer patients. And I think one of the most exciting pieces um, about the hackathon was that we were on interdisciplinary teams and that what skill sets that was able to bring. Um, oftentimes in, in my field, applied learning science, we see individuals working in silos and so they don't have as much of an impact as they hope to have because they don't have the skill sets or they don't have the perspective that allows them to have enough breadth to understand really what the individuals who will be using the thing that they're developing are going through and we had that, we had that at every level, especially the clinical level of um, individuals who've worked with pediatric cancer patients, those who have um, developed softwares for the health industry. And um, when I first arrived, I wasn't sure exactly what I would be able to contribute um, because I don't come from either of those areas. Um, but I quickly found that a lot of the health applications that are being developed and innovations in health um, oftentimes forget the very important component of um, human behavior and from a behavior analytic perspective and one that's informed by implementation science, I was able to bring perspective into, okay, here's this great thing that we've developed. Now, how do we get people to use it? And what do we have to be aware of in terms of people's environments that impact how they respond to um, an innovation? And so I think that overall, uh, the thing that I took away as a behavior scientist is that the work that should continue to happen as people develop technologies in healthcare is that those uh, technologies should continue to be informed by learning science and people who know how to implement positive consequences for improving behavior. Um, because as what I saw, one of the things that I saw this weekend and as I've explored more about health innovations, uh, we often use punitive practices to get people to use things uh, like fear and coercion. And so um, bringing in something that is positive that helps promote alternative behaviors 
and gets behavior going and then positively stopping behaviors that we don't want is really, re really, really important for uh, sustained efforts in anything really. So uh, this was a wonderful opportunity for me as well as our team and um, I'm, I really thank everyone at Mount Sinai, especially the App Lab people and um, our advisors that were able to assist us along the way. Thank you. And Romana. Hi, my name is Romana Huck, and I was part of Team Helping Stand, which was to create a device to help patients get in and out of the car um, more easily. And uh, first, I want to thank um, Kevin, Janice, and the entire Hackathon team for making it an incredible experience. I went into this event. I didn't have any idea. I didn't have any team. I just showed up, basically, uh, with an open mind. And I was just really curious if it was possible for a team to put together some type of product or solution for cancer within 48 hours. And I have to say, I was completely blown away by all the teams and what they were able to do in that short period of time. So all I can say is that, you know, no matter what your age is, how old you are, how young you are, what your position is here at Sinai or even outside Sinai, if you have an idea or you're just curious to see if um, your idea has legs or really just want to um, join a team and be part of something, I really, really encourage you to come to the hackathon and try it because uh, it, it really could be quite an um, amazing and transformative experience. So. Thank you. Thanks a lot, everybody. Yeah, the, uh, the energy, uh, commitment, um, creativity, and productivity over this weekend was nothing short of inspirational. Um, as Janice mentioned, we'll be putting uh, some information uh, following up on this event on the website, so I hope you'll check it out. Uh, and that this will be an inspiration to you as well for future events, and we'd like to continue to have more of these kinds of events during the year, not, not just once a year at, uh, at Sinai Innovation. So thanks a lot.